Oh, hello, good afternoon. Um, my name is Radek Krakosinski. I have a pleasure of conducting um, today's uh, webinar for you. Uh, welcome all. Um, I'm glad that you managed to, to join me. Uh, first of all, um, let me just ask you if, if, you, can, if you can hear me, because uh, that's, that's quite important. There's a chat in the like, bottom right hand corner, so you can, you can type in your, your answers if you, if you can hear me, because it would be nice to know uh, that, yeah, that you can and everything is working. <laughs> so that I'm not talking to like an empty space. Uh, someone is typing already. That's great. Oh, cool. Thank you for the confirmation. I hope that that uh, yeah, everyone, everyone who joined can can hear me. And as you as you know, um, today we are going to well talk about some some words. Uh, well, that will <laughs> make you sound smarter. Yeah, like I I cannot guarantee that that these words will really make you smarter, but at least at least they will make you like mm, sound smarter if you if you use them um in in your well english uh but anyways learning new words i guess always makes you smarter so i hope yeah uh, that's that's gonna work so um okay without um if any further ado let's 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 start i'm sure that uh, you know some of these words already um because i guess you're you're smart uh but uh some of them might be interesting i hope and some of them will be will be pretty pretty new to you um so let's um Let's have a look. Let's have a look at some some of, of the words that uh, I myself find interesting. Um, well, uh, the first the first word we're going to discuss. Uh, well, it's basically very similar to to our uh, word in that we use in, in, in our language in, in Polish. It's cacophony, and I guess yeah, th there's um, no no need to to explain to explain this one, as it has exactly the, the same mm, the same meaning as in as in our language. Um, so basically, cacophony is any any loud or unpleasant mixture of sounds, um, which could be like yeah, musical instruments, uh, howling dogs, uh, car horns, or anything. Even even people, yeah, too many people talking at the same time makes a uh, cacophony, right? Um, for example, yeah, a bachelor party is happening next door. Hence the the cacophony. Uh, yeah, I guess a party can be pretty loud at times. So. That's that's it. Um, okay, next one. Um, it's a bit more sophisticated. Um, looks French, doesn't it? <laughs> Disco polo. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, cacophony. <laughs> uh, this one is uh, ennui, um, and it's more related to to our mental mm, mental state. Um, ennui is a kind of a feeling we get uh, when we are simultaneously bored and and annoyed. Um, I guess it happens to, to all of us from, from uh, time to time. So it's not like uh, nothing like like a uh, feeling of depression or, or, or sadness, but basically, uh, yeah, if you feel like anyway, you just wish you were somewhere else, definitely not here. So I hope that this is not something you're going to feel uh, during our meeting uh, today. Yeah, I'm really hoping <laughs> for that. Um, and for, for example, yeah, how my date last night well i'll just say this at the end i had a knowing sense of ennui yeah so like knowing is like biting yeah so i guess the date um didn't really go go well um okay um the next one is um a quiver mm, probably you know the, the word quiver which is like uh, to shake or tremble uh, a quiver is is actually uh, something very similar um because, um, well, uh, if you're overcome with emotion or when you're really, really excited uh, about something, uh, we can say that, that you are um, a quiver. Uh, for example, yeah, you're waiting for some sequel to your, to your favorite movie and uh, yeah, I'm a quiver with excitement, like any Star Wars fans here, maybe. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah. Uh, if, if you're a quiver, you're basically shaking or, or trembling with, with excitement or some strong emotions that make you, makes you move, like physically move. Uh, yeah, probably children get a quiver um, with excitement when Christmas comes. Um, okay, uh, glib, a very short one, but uh, also quite, quite uh, interesting in, in my opinion. Any ideas um, what, what uh, the word glib means? If you if you know, uh, just just uh, 
try typing in your answer. Uh, maybe maybe you, you, you've heard the word, or maybe you, you have used it already, or um, someone's typing, but no, nothing pops up yet. Um, okay, so basically, yeah. Uh, glib is uh, kind of like smooth talking. Yeah, uh, you can't really put your finger on it, uh, uh, but but just you know something about the way somebody is talking like sounds completely insincere. Yeah, so somebody is a very smooth talker. They say they have all the solutions, but in fact, uh, it's just like blowing smoke. It's 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 fake. Yeah. So so basically, um, I guess lots of politicians. Uh, use that. Mm, so um, an example of a sentence is like, I know you think you, you're being helpful, but you're being way too glib. Yeah, so you, you talk way too smoothly, and it sounds too good to be true. So basically, uh, you're fake and insincere. I, I don't believe a single word you're saying. So that's, um, that's a glib, a nice, nice adjective in this in this sentence. Um, okay, um, the next one is umbrage. Um, Looks strange. Any any one of you like like seen the word before? Or it's totally new. Maybe somebody knows what what this one means. What is what is um, umbrage? This this one is quite sophisticated actually. Um, so and um, well, umbrage is basically um, an offense or or annoyance. Um, so yeah, very often on on social networking websites, people like exchange views or opinions. Um, some Twitter fights or, or Facebook bubbles, um, but uh, you know, so so um, umbrage is something that you, you, you respond with to to any kind of uh, insults or if somebody hurts your feelings, then yeah, this is the word to to use. Uh, so umbrage is offense or or annoyance, and we can use it. For example, in, in this kind of way, um, I know you're just an internet troll with no sense of right or wrong, but you didn't have to cause me so much umbrage. Yeah? So to cause somebody um, umbrage, like to cause or make somebody feel offended or, or annoyed. Yeah? So, so instead of mm, saying, yeah, ah, oh, I, I, I took offense or you offended me or you made me annoyed, you can, you can say, oh, you have caused me so much umbrage. Sounds much much smarter, don't you think? Um, so that's that's the word umbrage uh, for you. Um, well, next one is uh, taken straight from straight from Latin, yeah. Uh, non sequitur. Um, so basically, mm, what that is is uh, well, like a sudden change of the of the topic of of the conversation you're you're having. Yeah. So nobody gives you any any warning or, or a heads up. But the subject is totally changed all of a sudden. Um, so basically, um, yeah, non sequitur is like that. Yeah, little translation is it does not follow what you've said before. It doesn't make any any sense. Um, another thing that lots of lots of public figures and and politicians do when they when they will talk in public, uh, for example. Um, why did why did you just bring up astronauts? I thought we were talking about mud races. So there was a weird non sequitur. So yeah, if somebody just changes topic all of a sudden, then yeah, we can use this beautiful, smart sounding Latin phrase. Um, okay, whoa, this one looks kind of strange. Uh, vamoos. Um, actually, it's uh, based on, on um, something from, from the Spanish language, at least, uh, well, it's trying to pretend like the, that it sounds kind of, kind of Spanish-like. Um, so, um, yeah, the meaning of, of the moose is like to leave hurriedly, leave in a, in a, in a hurry. So, uh, it comes from, from the Spanish, uh, vamos, um, which is supposed to mean let's go. Um, but, um, yeah, in English it's, uh, yeah, it adds the meaning of in a hurry, yeah, to leave in a hurry. So you take it up a, a notch, yeah. So when, when it's time to, to vamoose, um, well, danger is coming. Danger is probably imminent. So it's better to, to leave um, in, a, in a hurry. So uh, for example, uh, well, I don't know how a mountain lion got in, in the room either, but we'll talk about it later. Vamoose, man, vamoose, let's, let's leave, hurry. Um, so if you want to yeah, ask somebody to, to do something quickly, like leave quickly, that's, that's the word to, to use. Yeah, so one word instead of three. 
to leave hurriedly. Um, okay, ubiquitous, uh, another like Latin looking word, um, like Bama's saying, <laughs> exactly. Um, um, any idea what, what this one um, means, ubiquitous? Maybe you've seen it somewhere or you, you, you've heard it before, maybe you've used it. Any, any ideas? If you, if you do have any ideas or guesses, just type them in. A kind of uh, flower? Um, well, yeah, some uh, yeah, botanic, uh, botanical associations. Well, actually, um, not really, but if you think about flowers, they, they are almost everywhere. Yeah? And, and basically, if something is uh, ubiquitous, it means that it is everywhere. Um, so, uh, but, you know, saying that something is everywhere is, well, simple. Yeah. So if you want to sound uh, a bit more sophisticated, we can use uh, the word ubiquitous, which is like, yeah, something found everywhere. Yeah. So it is so popular. It is, it is everywhere. Um, so yeah, the official meaning of the, of the word ubiquitous is, yeah, found, found everywhere. So popular that it's, it's basically wherever you look, it's there, it's ubiquitous. Um, people with mobile phones in the streets, I guess. Uh, yeah, or smartphone. Um, yeah, for example, oh yeah, I've seen plenty of guys with hipster beards. They're ubiquitous. Yeah, I need to shave mine, I guess, because I don't consider myself to be a hipster. But yeah, yeah so lots of lots of guys um, yeah, with, with hipster beards around, probably. Yeah, so they are ubiquitous, they are everywhere. Okay, um, next one, nefarious. Oh, beautiful, beautiful adjective. Um, any any ideas about about its meaning? Have you seen it? Have you used it? Because this is kind of like evil, evil adjective. So so basically, um, <laughs> the meaning is like yeah, like really, really evil. So if you if you take evil like the the extra mile, like into some really like <laughs> they say Bond villain territory. Then it's it's uh, it's nefarious. So uh, some synonyms is like wicked or or criminal. Yeah. So like the the actions of some person or criminal organization can be can be nefarious. So really really bad, evil. Yeah. Like really really evil. Um, for example, uh, the way he runs his business is just so yeah nefarious. So he does really really bad things while while running the, the business. So a very nice word, but yeah, I hope you will not be in situations where you will have to use this one. Um, capricious. Well, actually this one is kind of similar to, to the one uh, we use in, in our language. Uh, if somebody is um, um, capricious, then uh, yeah, it just means that uh, they are moody and kind of unpredictable, you know, like both both men and women sometimes behave this um, uh, this way. Um, but yeah, if you if you don't want to 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 um, to use words like moody or unpredictable, there's a smarter sounding word which is which is uh, capricious, and it's like not so um, negatively loaded. Yeah, so capricious is more on the on the neutral side, let's say, um, not as bad as moody or unpredictable because somebody might not like being called that but capricious is kind of neutral uh, for example well you seem a little capricious tonight dear is everything okay uh, well I guess we, we are all capricious from from time to time depending on a day and time of the year I guess um, okay the next one is like um, boondoggle mm, strange looking word but um, any ideas what what this one actually actually means Again, if you have any any ideas, guesses, just just type them in in the in the chat, and we can take it from there. Uh, if you don't, well, a boondoggle, basically, um, yeah, it's something that that pretends to be to be useful um, activity or thing, yeah, but in fact, it's just a big waste of your of your time. Like we we all uh, have to take part in some yeah, boondoggles. From time from time to time. So, um, for example, like of all the company meetings we've had this year, this was the biggest boondoggle. Yeah. So basically, nothing happened. I had to be there. Complete waste of time. But what can I do? Yeah. So, 
Um, yeah, it just happens to, to all of us from time to, to time, I guess. Um, okay, uh, sycophant. Who is a sycophant? Well, this is hmm, really, well, might sound strange, but um, have, you, have you seen this kind of word before? Or have you used it? Maybe in some film or TV series? Or if not, well, then um, it's a very nice word meaning that, well, somebody, <laughs> well, less formal ones are like a, a, somebody's a suck off, yeah, or, or a brown noser. Uh, well, I will not explain brown noser in detail. Um, but yeah, if, if you don't want to sound like like a teenager using, using the words like suck up or brown noser, um, yeah, we can use the word uh, sycophant, which uh, simply means, um, yeah, that you like making or paying compliments to, 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 to your boss, for example, because you think that, like, you might get something in in return, yeah. So uh, yeah, plenty, plenty of um, uh, sicker fans around. Just oh, boss, you look great. Huh? Hello. Um, for example, yeah. No, we totally deserve this raise. You're the biggest sicker fan in the office, yeah. So if somebody is waiting for for the boss with a coffee already made, like the way the the boss takes the coffee, then probably yeah, we can call this person a a sicker fan. So very nice. Sophisticated word for for somebody who is a is a suck up and likes uh, paying compliments to to people. Well, usually to to bosses or somebody higher in the company structure than than themselves. Um, okay, then we have uh, mellifluous, another beautiful um, adjective based on on Latin again because uh, mel basically means um, honey. Um, in in Latin, um, so if something is uh, mellifluous, then um, well, if you talk about music, for example, it's just it just hits you hits you right in the gut, like it just sounds uh, beautiful. So instead of instead of saying, "Whoa, damn, this is good," um, you can you can sound a little bit more smarter uh, using the word mellifluous yeah so it's just uh, the sound you hear is just smooth uh, flowing smoothly and it's just just hits your ears uh, in just just the right way so you know, sometimes you can hear such songs on the radio or whatever you're listening to uh, for example yeah I can't stop listening to the new arcade fire record it's so darn mellifluous yeah so just sounding so good like flowing like honey honey to my ears yeah so Mellifluous, very nice word in my opinion. Um, okay, let's have a look at the next brogue. Um, any ideas about the, the meaning of the of the word brogue? Or not really? If you again, if you have any ideas, just type them, type them in without me having you to well, uh, having to remind you to, to do it. So brogues basically, um, well. Uh, comes from from like 18th century um, Ireland. So basically, these are like sturdy, rugged-looking footwear. Um, so basically, if you want to 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 like compliment hmm, somebody's nice leather shoes or boots, you can use you can use this very nice nice word and say, oh, "I like your brogues, bro." Uh, so like saying, "Yeah, you have very nice leather shoes." Um, but yeah, that's too simple, I guess. So I like your brogues. Sounds uh, way way smarter, don't you? Don't you think? Um, okay, uh, perfunctory. Hmm, that's another nice nice adjective, um, which simply means um, yeah that uh, somebody is not really interested in what what they are doing. Yeah? So if somebody is having a conversation, but it's not really focused on what they are saying, or it's not really listening to, to the person they are talking to. Uh, they are uh, kind of like half-hearted effort. Yeah, like oh, yeah, I'll just talk to the hand. In the meantime, I will just think about something else. Uh, so, so that's uh, that's the word perfunctory. Like for example, yeah, the, the interviewer asked all the perfunctory questions. He didn't seem truly interested. Yeah, so if you don't really go deep, uh, if you just just um, touch the surface, you don't really care. What somebody's saying, not paying attention. Uh, yeah, that's that's the word to to use. Perfunctory. Um, okay, and the next one is vitriol. Well, what what's the meaning of that? If maybe you have some some ideas or educated guesses about that one, um, it's actually not not a very nice word. 
Uh, because uh, vitriol, which is like a, a name for, for sulfuric acid, which is, well, a very strong burning substance, um, is, is, uh, the word itself is quite, quite um, uh, powerful, because if you, if you have uh, vitriol for, for someone, um, well, let's say that uh, this someone is <laughs> not, your, not your favorite, favorite person. Yeah, so the nice phrase here is like to, to have to have vitriol for, for somebody. Like, um, yeah, don't even bring up that guy's name, the amount of vitriol I have for that person I can't even explain. So if you um, really don't like somebody, um, a nice and smart way of, of saying that is that, oh, I have, I have a lot of vitriol, a lot of sulfuric acid, yeah, which I would like to pour on his face yeah, for, for this person. So very strong and very unpleasant word, but mm, yeah, sounds, sounds a bit better than just saying that, oh, I really dislike this guy. I have, I have plenty of vitriol for him. Yeah. Okay. Obtuse. Um, what about this one? Uh, another nice adjective, which is actually not so, not so nice, but if you uh, just don't want to um, to, 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 to say that, uh, well, someone is uh, not very bright, not very smart, or, or not very intelligent, uh, that's the word to, to, to use. Maybe this person will not even understand what we mean by calling them obtuse. Um, but if somebody is dim, or slow-witted, or just not smart, um, then, then, yeah, that's, that's the right word to, to use. Just yeah, if, if the word uh, stupid seems just too too much or too uh, too childish. So yeah, obtuse, for example. Oh, don't worry, he's too obtuse to realize we're talking about him. Um, yeah, so dim-witted, like half-witted or just slow-witted. Yeah, stupid, not intelligent, not bright. That's obtuse uh, for you. So again, kind of negative word, but, but sometimes yeah, we need to use such words as well. Um, Quagmire. What's that? Have you have you heard this word uh, before? And and how how can we can we use it? Um, there's a much much simpler word uh, with the, with the same meaning. Basically, it's like a like a swamp or, or marsh, yeah, like a very wet area, a muddy area or ground where it can well drown easily. Uh, so. Yeah, we're not talking about a family guy character, but a swampy marsh, yeah, or uh, in fact, uh, a quagmire is any any difficult or precarious situation. So, um, yeah, if you're if you're stuck in a quagmire, uh, you're in a really bad place, in a really bad situation, and you yeah you don't want to to be there. Um, so it's quite a quite a predicament. Yeah. Mm, for example, yeah, until until he pays off the IRS, which is like Internal Revenue Service, um, the office that collects taxes. Yeah, uh, Bob's in one heck of a financial quagmire. So being yeah, being in a financial quagmire, mm, yeah, not not so good. So like uh, yeah, the literal meaning swampy marsh, but a more metaphoric meaning is yeah, like um, difficult or precarious situation, dangerous situation. We don't want to be in. Um, yeah, so that's that's quagmire for you. Um, fluxed. If you are fluxed, um, what does that mean? Any any ideas? Because no, no one has typed anything in quite a while, so I'm slightly worried you're not there. But <laughs> I, I know you are. But um, so any ideas? What 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 the word uh, flummoxed means? Because um, yeah, there are many many um, less sophisticated words um, with the same meaning. But basically, if you are uh, flummoxed. Um, yeah, you are kind of, um, yeah, bewildered or confused. Yeah. Like, uh, what's going on? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, kind of flummoxed, but, uh, yeah, kind of sounds like, like from some British comedy series or, or film, uh, for example, yeah, I, I was following the, the GPS. I have no idea how we got this lost. I'm, I'm flummoxed. Yeah, I'm confused. I'm bewildered. Like how? So if something is. Uh, or seems uh, to be incredible. This is this is the word to to use. Flummoxed. Mm, okay. Um, to cajole. That's actually a, a verb um, which we can use if we well we are trying to to persuade um, uh, somebody to to do something maybe that they do not really want to do. But um, uh, but yeah. Um, 
uh, it's like to, to exert pressure on 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 somebody. Uh, you're like, oh, come on, let's have one more drink. Yeah, so you're trying to cajole uh, a person into doing something they don't want to really really do. Mm, yeah. So for for example, yeah, I might try, but you're not going to cajole me into drinking another beer. Yeah, I've had enough. So uh, talk somebody into doing something. Yeah, persuade somebody to to do something. Uh, the word cajole is oh, well. You have to admit, much more, well, at least it looks much more smarter, yeah. Uh, but there is a risk that if you use this kind of word, um, not everyone will understand you, but but still, it's all about seeming to be smart, yeah. So, yeah, um, cajole somebody into, into doing something. That's a very nice phrase you might you might use. Um, another one starting with C, caustic. Um, that's um, another kind of like chemical word very very sharp and and unpleasant um well if um, well you did something really bad or you said something you shouldn't have said um then um instead of instead of saying uh sorry i, I was a jerk or i behaved like a jerk we can use the word um caustic and just say something like oh, oh i didn't really mean it when i said you would die alone and unloved i was being caustic yeah so like very, very unpleasant, sarcastic. And yeah, if sometimes we, we can say too much and if we just want to say sorry in a, well, smart way, we can just say, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I was, I was being caustic. I, I shouldn't have said that, yeah. So like a um, very burning or unpleasant remark that we sometimes make as uh, caustic or we, we are caustic from time to time. Um, oh, something from, from, from French. Um, I mean, probably uh, the pronunciation can differ depending on like um, what English speaker from what country would say, but it's like uh, they try to say like fate accompli. Of course, it's not like uh, a typical correct French pronunciation, but yeah, but there are many, many French phrases in English and so the pronunciation very often differs, but it's something like, yeah, fate accompli. Um, yeah, if you, if you know French, then of course you know what that is. Um, but yeah, basically it's like a, like a done deed. Yeah, um, somebody's asking you to do something, but you've you've already done it. Huh? That's that's fate complete. Um, so it's like the literal meaning is like already done. Yeah. Um, so like some yeah, HR puts puts a frustrating new policy into effect, and they inform you like after after the fact that's a yeah fate complete or when. The government like just rolls out some new new law or regulations, and they then inform me afterwards. Yeah, that's that's fate. I complete. It's already done. Sorry. Yeah, now we have to um, deal with that. So that's that's a fate. I complete. For example, um, oh, one letter is missing. What's that, dear? You need me to take out the trash? Well, no need. Fate. I complete. So done already. Yeah. So if you have already done what somebody's asking you to do, this is the phrase. This is the phrase you can you can use. To say that, haha, I've already done it. Um, sounds much smarter, yeah. Than oh yeah, I've done it already. Yeah, uh, gregarious. Um, any ideas about the meaning of the word gregarious? Just feel free to type anything if you have some ideas. Um, but basically, mm, yeah, finally, some nice word. Uh, I mean, without any negative meaning. But if you if you are gregarious, um, yeah. You like people's company. You're very sociable and talkative. Yeah, you like spending time with with people, uh, which nowadays might be a bit tricky during the pandemic. But um, but yeah, so very sociable, and yeah, somebody who likes spending time with others is definitely gregarious. For example, um, you know why I like you. You're one of the most gregarious people I know. So like, um, everyone knows the word sociable, but yeah, if you use the word gregarious, you take it up. A notch yeah, into a different territory. Uh, so that's regards for you. Uh, fastidious, another nice, another nice adjective. Um, well, if you are fastidious, well, you seem to be paying too much attention to to details. Yeah. Mm. So basically, yeah, somebody really obsessed with small details. Somebody like who is very difficult to to please because they have like very high standards. Um, yeah, you can say like, oh, you're an excellent cook. You must be very fastidious in the kitchen. Yeah, so like somebody measures everything, uh, like the amount of spice they add. Yeah, like pays attention to, to every little 
detail yeah then you are fastidious uh like yeah it's six hours and you still haven't finished uh oh, you're being way too fastidious yeah? so simply you pay too much attention to to details like you will never finish it if you if you want to do it this uh this way okay modeling um that's another nice one um well and uh, we can yeah, explain it as uh, like tearfully sentimental yeah you're like choked up with with emotion all of a sudden just when you look through some old photographs or um yeah are you thinking about the past how good it was but everything has changed um yeah so kind of like like um heavy heavy word um yeah we could use it to describe ernest hemingway like he he, he was never weepy he was a tough guy but uh, yeah, he had his modeling moments. Yeah, so like sentimental, like tearfully sentimental, remembering the past days of your glory. Yeah. Then you are you are modeling, um, for example. Yeah. Uh, sorry, looking at all these old photos always makes me modeling. Yeah. So like um, sentimental or even tearfully sentimental. Yeah. Uh, looking at the at the days past. Mm, okay, flabbergasted. Well, we had flamox, now we have flabbergasted. Another um, funny looking word. Um, any ideas about the meaning of flabbergasted? Because, um, yeah, what it actually means is that, uh, yeah, if you um, are so surprised, you don't believe that something is, is real, you hear some sh shocking news on the radio. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, we hear lots of shocking news on the radio um like you cannot believe it you're flabbergasted like what is this it's real is this is this really happening it cannot be real life yeah so this is yeah, the situation when when you're being flabbergasted like just something uh, seems so out of this world that you, you cannot really believe it's it's happening or it has just happened uh for example uh, yeah i saw game of thrones last week i'm still flabbergasted uh game of thrones three no four years ago i guess they released the last season but um yeah so if you cannot believe something that's happening you're flabbergasted mm, okay tito toller um who is a tito toller i guess there's a chance you might know this word but because this is a person yeah so so who who is who is a tito toller um the answer is very simple like uh, a tito toller is, uh, is somebody who um, doesn't drink alcohol at all yeah so it can be like a recovering alcoholic or, or somebody who basically doesn't drink for 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 some um, reason any person who doesn't drink alcohol at all is a is a teetotaler yeah the word comes from uh yeah from 19th century from from england there was some temperance movement of people who tried to abstain from from drinking uh but yeah so total or somebody who doesn't drink alcohol at all mm, such a simple idea but such a strange word yeah? like uh, are you sure you want to invite him to your bachelor party he's a teetotaler yeah like um so what's the point of inviting somebody to a party if they don't drink well why not um anyways empathy um well i guess uh, no there's no need to really explain this this word because we have the same in our language but um yeah like um, some sensitive sensitivity to 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 other people's feelings um that's that's it so but again it's a smart word so that's why it made made my list well, maybe we just sometimes lack empathy but uh for example i know you think he's the enemy because of his political beliefs but let's try to have a little empathy okay um yeah so with a little empathy this world can be a, a slightly better place i believe um catch 22 um, yeah, it's like the, the title of a, of a very famous uh, famous book by uh, by Joseph Heller. Yeah? So basically, mm, not a very um, uh, sophisticated word or phrase, but but you know, meaning is clear. Like the paradox uh, where there's there's no no escape. Yeah. Um, so you're damned if you do something, and you're you're damned if you if you don't do it. Yeah? um the situation with no no easy no easy answers dead end yeah no easy way out so that's like a yeah, old-fashioned catch 22 like like uh you have to have money to make money uh, so that's the typical catch 
2022. Trist, very short, and not very complicated, but um, any ideas about, about the word trist? What's, what's the meaning? Uh, trist is actually, um, well, something like affair or one night stand or like a romantic meeting for a particular purpose yeah um but yeah, if you don't want to use words like affair or one night stand you can use the word the word tryst which is way smarter uh so it's so basically having a, like a secret meeting with, with somebody uh you shouldn't be alone with um then uh, yeah, that's a that's a that's a tryst uh, for example oh no we never officially dated we just had the occasional tryst so occasional like romantic meeting so that's a that's a tryst for you um paradigm um well we have something something similar in uh, in our language so basically um there's a very nice noun that can refer to, to to some grammatical um paradigm or pattern or framework of of assumptions but um yeah there needs to be a paradigm shift if we're ever going to make progress on the issue so we need to change our perception yeah change the pattern uh, to to make to make progress, uh, yeah. Sometimes we forget about that. So, very nice, smart looking and sounding word, a paradigm, um, dichotomy. Um, well, again, we use this word um, in our language as well. So basically, um, dichotomy is, is a very nice noun um, that refers to something with with two contradictory, like opposite qualities. Yeah. So two mutually exclusive or contradictory identities, yeah? two things that cannot go together, like according to, to logic. Um, it was this, this dichotomy that, that made her actions so hard to understand. Yeah, sometimes uh, some people's actions are not, not too clear. Mm, so that's, that's dichotomy. Um, equivocate, that's a very nice, very nice verb. Um, any ideas what, what this one can mean? So basically, again, lots of politicians, lots of public figures equivocate when they when they talk. Like uh, they they do not really make uh, themselves uh, clear. Yeah. So other phrases meaning the same, like beat around the bush, or just use some vague uh, or ambiguous language. Yeah. So just you're trying very hard not to make yourself clear. Yeah. Um, uh, for example, when asked about their, their stance on healthcare, the politician equivocated. Yeah, we can hear politicians equivocate when they talk to the media like every single day. So nothing, nothing new. They've always done it. Yeah? But the very smart way um, for, for bullshitting is simply um, to equivocate. Um, uh, solipsistic. That is kind of like philosophical um, adjective. Um, so basically, it refers to to this uh, yeah, egocentric belief that only only the self, only I exist. Yeah. So, so uh, some some other like more popular words with this meaning are like self-centered or or selfish. Yeah. That's that's solipsistic for you. But this one sounds yeah really smarter, I guess. Uh, so the, the the party's policies were solipsistic and completely uh, ignored the working class. Um, yeah, politics again, but yeah, so that's solipsistic, self-centered or or selfish. Mm, then acquiesce. Oh, that's a very nice um, verb. Again, looks look Latin, but basically, if you if you um, acquiesce to to something, um, you will accept something reluctantly. Yeah, so like not not willingly, uh, but you don't don't put up any any fight. Yeah, like you don't like something, but well, okay, let it. Let's have it your way. Yeah. So that's to to acquiesce, like to 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 accept something without without fighting uh, for your own opinion, which is which is pretty much different. Yeah. Uh, like for example, after looking at the radar, the the pilot acquiesced to to finding an alternate route. Like he didn't discuss, didn't put up any fight. Just okay, let's do it if you want it. Sure. So that's to to acquiesce. So like very nice word. Which means to agree to something you like, don't really agree with. Uh, facetious. Um, that's another fancy mm, adjective um, with very simple meaning, but uh, looks well, kind 
kind of sophisticated, I guess. So um, this adjective describes um, um, the, the way you're, you're joking, uh, often in an like, inappropriate manner, like when you treat serious, serious problems or issues with with deliberately ill-suited humor, yeah. So, so um, you make simply uh, jokes about something you shouldn't be uh, really joking about. Mm. Well, we, we all do it sometimes, I, I guess. Uh, for example, yes, yeah, she, she made a facetious remark about her supervisor, not knowing he was in the room. Hmm. Not, not a good thing. So, always check who who is in the room when you want to make some uh, facetious remarks about about people yeah so joking in, a, in an inappropriate manner makes you makes you uh, facetious um, and well aplomb um, well kind of short doesn't really look look smart any any ideas what what this one means well it's uh, simply uh, self-confidence yeah if you if you really um, have high self-esteem and you feel self-confidence that's that's the word that's the word to use. Uh, for example, um, it was easy to see. By the way, he spoke with clients that he possessed a lots of aplomb, so lots of self self confidence. Actually, self confidence looks way smarter than aplomb, but but yeah, that's a good good word to, to remember to make you yeah, more more self uh, confident. Uh, okay, these are all the smart words I, I have prepared for you today. Um, I hope that you might find uh, some of them useful. Mm. <laughs> Flabbergasted, basically. Thank you. Uh, and, you know, just remember that if you use this kind of language, um, people who are not native speakers might have problems understanding what you're actually trying to say. But if you find that funny if you, and if you want to sound sophisticated, smart, uh, then, then use this kind of language. And, and see what, what happens, how people will, will react to, to what, what you are saying. So once again, um, thank you very much for, for attending um, our, our today's uh, webinar. Um, have a good day and, and hope to, um, yeah, maybe not see you, but yeah, talk to you in the future. So, so again, thank you, have a good day and, and uh, yeah, bye-bye.